America and the world watched in shock and disbelief 20 years ago as two students carried out a massacre at Columbine High School in Colorado. 12 students and one teacher were killed, and school shootings became embedded in the national psyche. According to the Washington Post, 237 school shootings have happened since Columbine, the deadliest among them the shooting at Virginia Tech, only eight years later. 32 people were killed. Half a decade later in 2012, a shooter entered Sandy Hook Elementary School and carried out the second deadliest shooting. 26 children and school administrators died. Only a year ago, the Ash Wednesday massacre at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School left 17 students and teachers gunned down in cold blood. Such horrors could shake the faith of anyone. Sister Mary Gianna Thornby was a student at Columbine during the massacre. She joins us now. Sister, at the time of the shooting, how strong was your faith? I really didn't have faith at all. I didn't grow up with any faith. I really didn't know whether God existed or if he had a plan for my life. And now you were you were supposed to be in the Columbine Library that day where most of the students died. It was where you usually were. What happened and what ultimately caused you to realize you had a vocation? Yeah, every day I would go to the library my freshman year and my sophomore year in high school. Every day except one day. I was sitting on in my art class on April 20th, 1999, when all of a sudden I had this overwhelming urge to leave. And I ended up running into my friend Rebecca in front of the library, and I talked her into leaving. And as we're driving away from school, I looked in my rear view mirror and noticed hundreds and hundreds of my schoolmates running out of school. I soon found out that there had been a shooting and that most of the shootings happened in the library. And I wondered like, why wasn't I there every other day, but this one day? And I remember being told the next day, you know, God must have a plan for your life. And so that's when I realized God existed, but I, I didn't know who he was. And I turned to many other things to find fulfillment and acceptance in life. And it, everything I fill my life with, it's like nothing was fulfilling. But one of my friends invited me to the Catholic church down the street from our high school. And I walked in and immediately I met this youth minister and she started telling me about a God that passionately loved me. And I realized not only did God lead me out of Columbine that day, he was leading me to himself. What a powerful testimony, sister. 20 years later, let me ask you this. How do you react when you learn of another and another school shooting? It's so difficult to see other uh, young people having to go through what we did. It's really difficult to see many young people who are falling in despair and hopelessness. And like the two boys who did the shooting at my high school, it's hard to see people responding out of the anger and the hatred and the, and the unforgiveness when God offers us a full and abundant life in Him. I love the story of Rachel, who was the first person who was killed at my high school. She had this theory that if we could just touch one person's life, uh, responding in kindness and compassion and forgiveness and love, that we would never know how far this would go, that it just might start a chain reaction. So is that what you say to other survivors of tragedies, to reach out, to do as Rachel did? Absolutely, I think that's what we're longing for, to know God's love, to reach out to one another in love and kindness, and, and also that no matter what we experience in life, God has a full and abundant life, and he can take the worst tragedies of our life, just like the greatest tragedy was Jesus, was Jesus being put to death on the cross, and it led to our salvation, that he can make something so beautiful, even out of the great tragedies of our life. Sister, thank you for reliving that. You're welcome.